Good morning, church. We're going to sing out a new song to the Lord today. Just invite him to come and be in this place with us. So all together, we're just going to lift up this simple, simple shout out right here. Come on. We're singing.
you alone to rule in our hearts, to give us that image, Lord. Shatter that breakthrough. Tear it down. Show us what you're doing. We want to believe it, and we want to claim that breakthrough today. We claim it in the name of Jesus. And I can see strongholds coming down. I can see strongholds coming down. Cause I can see Jesus reaching out. He's reaching out. Show us God. And I can see strong. What timing. Wow. We've been practicing that for a while. Wow. It's so great to be here. Uh, someone asked me uh, a couple of weeks ago, someone asked me uh, where I go to church. And I said, I go to Christ Fellowship. <laughs> yeah. And they said, because we live in Seattle, you know. And, uh, and he said, where is that? And I said, like he, because in Seattle he hadn't, he didn't know that name, and I said, it's in Tennessee. And he said, you go to church in Tennessee? And I said, yeah. And that was the end of that conversation. He didn't have, I don't know if you thought that was gone somewhere, but he didn't ever ask me anything else about it, but I don't know what he thought. Anyway, it's good to be here. Um, it's interesting, you know, you, like, uh, I was praying about, we had a great day yesterday here, and I was just praying about what to talk about this morning, and I asked Derek. It's hard to come into a, a church like this with Derek and all of you because it's so good. You know, it's not like going into like a bad church, you know what I mean? And then it's like, it's not that hard to like kind of impress them, but here, wow, <laughs> this is hard. So I won't try. I mean, I'm not gonna try at all up here, so just so you know. Um, so I was asking Derek what to talk about, and he, he's like, we pretty much got it all covered. So <laughs> he did. Um, so that's it. Thanks for coming. And uh, <laughs> No, so I'm sitting here, and this, wow, this powerful theme's jumping out, you know, of Jesus and breakthrough and strongholds and, and Richie talking about. I love what Richie said. I, I haven't ever thought of that. I'm going to use that when I'm in another church sometime, but, and, uh, but when he said it's not about focusing on sin, it's about focusing on Jesus at communion. You know, I've, I grew up like, um, my, my mom's favorite verse was, the wages of sin is death. And that's where she would always stop, just right there. Like she would go, remember, the wages of sin is death. Good night. And that was <laughs> more of a fear thing. Um, it was a long time before we read the rest of that. It was good news. But to focus on Jesus rather than to focus on sin, because when you focus on Jesus, like Richie said, well, it's that the sin is remembered no more. It's canceled. So, like, why would I want to look at the sin when I can look at Jesus? Like, that's the way to think about it. And so, thanks, Richie, for doing that. And then we partake of the communion. So I just, I thought, well, let's just right, stay right on that theme. And, and Richie was talking about the Emmaus Road, the encounter with the disciples with Jesus on the Emmaus Road. And uh, so after the resurrection, after the resurrection, Jesus had told the disciples, when this thing finishes, uh, I'll, I'll see you on the mountain, he says. And so that's where they go. So I'm just going to read. This is Matthew um, 28. It says, now the 11, because they, you know, they lost one. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee if this was me, I, would be, I wouldn't be one of the 11. I can tell you that right now. Uh, now the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had designated. And when they saw him, this is interesting, when they saw him, they worshipped him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. So some worshipped and some doubted. 
which means they either didn't know if it was really him, a lot of different ways to doubt this whole scenario. I'm pretty sure they killed him. Now he's back. Hmm. Like they doubt it, like, wow, I don't get that whole thing. Or it meant that I don't think I can keep going with this thing. Like this is too crazy. But somehow they just weren't sure of what to do. And others just worshipped. Like we just accept this for what it is right now. And we're just going to hang with it and see what happens. What's, you know, if you, you know, that old saying, if you start with a no, you are done. If you start with a yes, at least you can move forward in things. Right? We're so, no, no. We're so push off and resistant to things, especially when they scare us. I'm not doing that. Why? Because I love my boring, mundane, debt-ridden life. <laughs> Trying to protect this awful, you know, why say yes and risk all of it? It's like I would risk it any day. You know, that it, it could be better than this. Better than what? Whatever it is you are in right now. And if you think what you're in is good, this is better than that. Like it's worth worshiping the one who just conquered death in front of you. That breaks all the strongholds as we've been singing about. But some didn't. I guarantee, you know, we know in this room, there's those of us in this room like, like this. Like I, this is the way to go through life if, man, people love when they see you. <laughs> like we want that guy on our team. Pick him. <laughs> um, anyway, Jesus came up and said to them, they haven't seen Jesus for a while in this scenario, so here's what the first thing he says to them, all authority, all power of absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Mm, that's a good leader. That's good to know. So that's who your leader is. He has all authority and power on heaven and in earth has been given to the Bible study leader, group leader. Wow. Um, go, therefore, he says, because of this, go then as you're going, as you're going, make disciples of nations. Not all the nations, of nations, of ethnic, ethnos, of the people. Make disciples of them. Help the people to learn of me, believe in me, and obey my words, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, remaining with you perpetually, regardless of circumstance, on every occasion, even to the end of the age. Good luck, have fun, I'll be in front of you, behind you, in you, in your mind, in your heart, let's go. Let's go, there it is. That's it. Now, if, I don't know, if I was standing in that group, wouldn't you want a little more information? Because that's a lot of content. What do we teach them? Everything I taught you. I don't even know what that is. Like, what does that mean? I would, do you have a book or something we could carry? Like a brochure, four <laughs> points? Something we could, no, 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 no. No, 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 this is about relationship. Just get on out there, go on. Get out there, and when you start talking, it'll come. The Spirit will tell you. The Spirit will tell me, yeah. How will you know? Oh, you'll know. That's Jesus' favorite way of teaching. Oh, you'll know. But wait, yeah, wait until the power comes on you, and you'll be my witnesses. What power? The Spirit. What's that going to look like? Oh, oh, you'll know. Yeah, I know, but what does it look like? Well, I can't even describe it to you. You'll know. Well, what would you do when it comes? Oh, you'll know. Like that. That's the instruction. That's pretty wide-ranging and free, isn't it? Don't you want this little narrow thing that you can just, blah, blah, blah. don't we want that? No. We think we do, but we don't. He's like, well, where do you want us to go? I don't know. Wherever you want to go, where are you going? Well, I was just going to CVS. Okay. We, he's, okay, he's, this guy's got CVS. Where are you guys going? Like, it doesn't matter. So what if we don't know where to go? Are you not going anywhere at all? No, we're just going to go, there, okay, there. Like, it's that simple. Why are you complicating this thing? Well, what did we say? I know. We'll know. Right. Now you got it. We're all stressed out and freaked out over all this stuff. But it's like, it's not that complicated. And the promise is here, like we've been singing about, is that Jesus will go with us 
And even more than that, we have his mind. We have the spirit of the living God. God is for you. Jesus is in you. Jesus is with you and the spirit is in you. Like, you, it's the whole trinity. It's four of you. It's never one of you. It's a foursome. You're never alone. Do you think you're alone? Yes. Well, that's not true. Do you never talk to the three others that are with you? Do you think you're separate from them? You can't be. We just celebrated that that's done. So, so, why, so why is Jesus giving this commission? Why is he doing this? Do you know why he's doing it? It's not just for people that don't know this yet. It is for them. It's so that you will be continually wowed by what God wants to do in and through you in this life that can be pretty boring and frustrating and selfish and segregated and separated. He's saying, no, this is all about relationship and winning. Let's go. Here we go. Here we go. Like that. Why would you say no to that? Because you're afraid? Because we're afraid? Of what? That we could fail? You can't fail. Jesus like, you can't fail. This is a thing where you can't fail. You can't even die, he said. Wow. All right, I guess I can risk a day for this or something. Like that. But, but then, you, then I think, well, okay, but what did he teach what did Jesus teach the disciples that they're supposed to like go tell everybody? What did he teach them? So a good friend of ours who's now with Jesus, actually, um, he wrote down these things called the seven principles. And this is just his view of what are, the, what are the sort of the main points of what Jesus taught his disciples. So I'll just give them to you. Uh, just, and, then, and then we're just going to, I'm just going to say something about these seven. Okay, here we go. Ready? Here we go. So these are the big questions I would ask myself of Jesus before I left. What is the purpose of what we're doing? Like, what's the purpose of it, right? That's a good question. The purpose, here's the purpose. This is Jesus' answer right back. The purpose of this whole thing, of the whole thing. Here you go. Get ready. Here's the big whole purpose. Here it is. To love God, love yourself, and love other people. Good luck. Have fun. That's it. That's the purpose. That's it. Love. Love. Love God. All your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love others in the same way that you love yourself in the right way. Because if you hate yourself, guess what you do to other people? You hate them and you hate God. You need to accept who you are, who God made you to be in your right identity and, and love it. You should love the way God sees you. If you don't love yourself in the right way, you do not understand how God sees you. You don't get it. Oh my gosh. And, and the way we know that is Jesus is God walking around. And so who does Jesus look at and go, oh, my gosh. Oh, do you know this guy over here? He never talks like that about people. This guy over here, terrible speaker. He, Jesus doesn't talk about people like that. <laughs> this disciple, he's all about love, horrible in math. I'm just saying, he's just not good in math. So that love thing ain't going to get you a job, brother. So, I, you know. He doesn't talk, only, only we talk like this. He's not disappointed in anything about you. Who told you that he was disappointed in you? The Bible didn't. Some person might have, they're not right, they're wrong. He loves you, he loves you so much that while you are hostile towards him, spitting on him, rejecting the God you don't even know, he died for you. Do you got any friends like that? Or do they just slam you? Is it a big competition on social media? Yeah, wow. So the, the purpose is for you to be loved and love God, for you to understand who you really are and rejoice in that, and for you to love other people. That's, what the, that's the whole thing right there. There it is. That's it. So that's the purpose. Well, what's the gospel? Like, what's the gospel? Like, if we're going to go out there and preach the gospel. What's the gospel? Here's the gospel. The first one was Matthew 22. Here's the gospel. The gospel is a person. His name is Jesus. Boom, there it is. That's it. What's the gospel? Jesus. Oh, okay. That's the gospel. John 5, 39, John 14, 6, Colossians 1, 27, Galatians 2, 20. Oh, the gospel is a person. His name is Jesus. That's the gospel. Okay, well, what's the work we're supposed to be doing? We gotta do some work, don't we? 
So what's the work? So the, the Jews asked Jesus, what are the works of God that we may know them and do them? Works, plural. It can't be just one. It's got to be a lot. You know, it's Christianity. It's a lot of work. So what is the work? And Jesus says this, the work, one thing, work. The work is to believe the one God sent, Jesus. Wow, we keep coming back to this person. What's the purpose? Love God, love yourself, love others. What's the gospel? Jesus. What's the work? To believe in Jesus. Well then, what's the ministry then? Gotta have a ministry. Can't live through life without a ministry. <clears throat> what's the ministry? The ministry of a follower of Jesus is reconciliation. Do you know what that is? Love God, love yourself, love others. The ministry of reconciliation. It's all fairly simple. This is the ministry. Tell me what you're doing during the day to produce reconciliation between you and God and you and other people. How is that working for you? Or are we ministers of separation, right? We're against people. We're against them. We're against that team. We're against that party. We're just against people. That's our main thing. I'm against the Patriot fans. I'll just say it out loud. I'm against it. <laughs> wow, see the con? Now we're off Jesus now. All of a sudden, like, wow, a Super Bowl. That's different. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So what is, the, what is the ministry of Jesus? Seriously, it's reconciliation. Our job in the world is to bring reconciliation. But if you aren't reconciled here, you, it is impossible to bring reconciliation in any situation. Wow, we could talk a long time about that. It's amazing to me, peace processes where people who are at war in their own heart are sitting down together to resolve war between countries. It's impossible, and the reason we don't have peace is because we don't have peace here. If you want a team to build peace, the team themselves have to be at peace. I've never been in that room yet. I don't care if you have a degree from Harvard School of Diplomacy, London School of Diplomacy. If you have conflict here, you will produce conflict in this room. That's all you can do. And that's why we don't have peace anywhere. But we are ministers of reconciliation. It starts right here. Where are you at war like right here? That's the ministry. What is the church? The church is the body of Christ. That's what it is. It's the body of Christ, Matthew 18, Ephesians 4. What is the method of leadership? The method of leadership is to live and serve like and through Jesus. How did Jesus lead? By serving. That's what communion's all about. And finally, what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is the rule and reign of Jesus in your heart. There it all is. That's it. So when Jesus says, go out and teach them everything I've commanded you, this is it. Love God, love yourself in the right way, and love your neighbor. Bring reconciliation in the body of Christ. And the good news is the King, Jesus, is already here. He's not coming. He's already here. That's what it is. That's all. Good luck. Enjoy. Go, go say that to the world. That's it. So what, is that? so what does that look like? Like how hard is that? So uh, whenever, I, whenever I'm looking at Scripture, whenever I'm thinking about anything, the only way I know how to think about things, the way Jesus talks about it, is always in relationship to people. That's the only way to really think about anything that matters. If you think a job Anything is more important than relationship to people. You're going you're gonna to struggle through life alone. Alone. In a, in, in, alone only in your own mind. Only in your own heart. It's a delusion. You can never be away from God. He's always right there to be with you. But we just, we just do this with him. We just move away from him. But he's not moving away from you. He never will. He's always with you. Like this microphone. <laughs> he's always with you. So, so I just think, okay, when I think about going out and sharing this with people, so, so I just thought of this example because of, of what we were singing about. So Donna and I, my wife down here, and my twin sisters down here, we don't look anything alike. And, uh, and my brother-in-law, you know. Well, fam all families have in-laws, you know, but that's about reconciliation, so that's okay. <laughs> 
Um, we've grafted him in, you know what I mean. So, uh, but, so, so Don and I, we, came, we were overseas, we came back for a short time in the States, and so our, we figured, like, we're in a neighborhood, let's meet the neighbors. It's interesting, because we live in Seattle currently, and our neighbor, who I guarantee you will never listen to this podcast, um, so I'll talk about him in a derogatory <laughs> fashion. And if he listens, I'll like, oh, you listen. Uh, no, he, he, we were meeting. He, he's a really good guy. I really like him. And uh, he says to me, on our meeting, hey, I'm Jamie. He says his name. He says to me, hey, welcome to the neighborhood. Thanks. He goes, if you smoke weed and drink a lot, you're welcome at our house anytime. I'm like, okay. Hey. <laughs> Same. And Donna's like, how's the neighborhood? I think, I, think I, I like him, but I think he told us never to come over, but I loved how he did it, I think. <laughs> pretty sure. <laughs> So I'm so happy how he didn't invite us. Anyway. <laughs> it's Seattle, though, so see all that's legal because we're progressive. That's why that is. And so, anyway. So anyway, in this other neighborhood, not that one, in this other neighborhood, so we, we were meeting the neighbors. And because it's part of what we do in the ministry of reconciliation and reconciling to ourselves and others and God, and the only way to really love God is to love your neighbor. Because I don't actually know how to love God, do you? Like, I, if I say, I lo- oh, do you love God? Yeah, I love God with my whole heart. I don't even know what that means. Do you, honestly? Do I love him with my whole heart? What is that? So, so that passage is the way you know whether you really love God is by loving your neighbor. Like, that's how it works. Jesus said, if you give a drink to the least of these, you're giving it to me. So Jesus doesn't need a drink. We give it to the, that person, the homeless person, whatever person. We're giving it to Jesus. If you want to love God with your whole heart, love your neighbor in the same manner that you rightly love yourself. That's loving God. So John says, if you say you love God and you hate your neighbor, you're a liar. That's what he says. Pretty strong for the love guy, you know. You're a liar. So we're going to try and love our neighbors. But the beautiful thing is we have the spirit within us that, that compels us or uh, pushes us towards loving them and loving me and Donna loving each other and so our neighbor one of our neighbors in this neighborhood where we're in was this lady like uh, I don't know how old she was mid 30s or something um, a crazy wild like a hurricane of a person you know these kinds of people and she would just come into the room like a windstorm and and she had bright red hair and she was this amazing artist and, um, but she was really, really unhappy because she had gone through a horrible divorce and she was really struggling with drugs and alcohol, really wrestling with it. And so you have this human that's filled with creativity and she was f- super funny and just fun to be around when she wasn't falling apart, which was like from minute to minute. We love being with you and you're falling apart and you're back and you're falling like that. You know, it's just... It was really like, wow. And so uh, we loved her. And then we, and she, she took us over to her house. And you go in her house, and it's like this incredible art. It's like a museum of just amazement. Like all of this beauty and potential coming out of this person. But just she couldn't do anything with it. It was because she was in such inner tragedy and pain and stronghold and addiction and all this stuff and didn't like herself and felt alone and all this. And so... Donna was spending a lot of time with her, and Donna says, um, she said, let's have her over, let's, ha- let's, let's invite her over, and, um, and let's talk to her together, and Jamie, you do your part. I'm like, wait, my, what's my part? And she goes, you, you know your part, but your part is first. I said, I didn't ask you when my part is, I asked you what my part is. Like, I get, <laughs> like what is my part? You know, you, you'll know what to do. And... Um, <laughs> And then right when you do that, I'll do my part. And what's your part? Second. My part is second, and yours is first. Okay. So, anyway. So, and so we're having dinner with this woman, and, and she's, you know, it's like she's, it's very quickly she just gets into the tragedy of her life because it's ever-present to her and, uh, and how much she depends on drugs and alcohol. And, and so, um, so I say to her, I said, hey, listen, I, I want to say, I want to explain something to you to help you. And, sh- and she said, she goes, Jamie, are you going to give me the Jesus talk? I'm like, huh? What? Are you going to give me the Jesus talk? Because if you're going to give me the Jesus talk, I'm walking right out the door. Do not give me the Jesus talk. 
I'm like, okay. Donna, can I see you in the kitchen for a second? <laughs> My part's over. <laughs> like, Donna's like, what are you doing? Like, you're supposed to do your part. I didn't, I tried to do my part. She said I couldn't give her the Jesus talk. Like, do something else. That's my only talk. That's the talk I have. That's my part. I do the Jesus talk. She said, no Jesus talk. It's your part now. You're into your part now. I don't have another talk. Donna's like, you're still on your part. Let's get back out there. Okay. Hi. Well, you know, you come back and sit down. Hi. Yeah. Hmm. And then she's, then the woman says to me, I got I to gotta get my future worked out. I got to get things worked out. She said, I'm going to a fortune teller next week. I'm driving to another city. I'm going to go to a fortune teller, and I got to get some direction. Now, the, Jesus said, I'll be with you in every circumstance, even to the end of the age. I'm like, I would just love it if you were here right now, even to the end of dinner. Like, I would take that. Like, forget the age. I'm just, like, stuck right now. And so, uh, and so I have this idea suddenly. And I said, oh, I can tell your fortune right now. And she said, you can? And Donna's like, is this your part? You can? Huh. <laughs> this is your part. Yeah, that's my, that's my part. I can't do the Jesus talk. I'll do something else. I'm going to tell her fortune. Okay, all right. I don't have another talk. I'm, I'm winging it here with me in the spirit like the wind. Can't control it. Don't know where it's coming from. And trust me, I do not know where this is coming from. And we clearly don't know where it's going. But when I'm done, it's your part. So just get ready. <laughs> so I say to her, she goes, you want to read my palm? I'm like, no, I don't even need to do that. Like, oh. And so I said, listen, uh, I see in your future that you're going to meet a man. She goes, oh, my God. And I'm like, close. Yeah, that's close. Uh, um, you're in the ballpark. You're in the. And I said, uh, and he's going to love you more than anyone's ever loved you. And he's going to be willing to lay down his life for you because you are the most beautiful thing he's ever seen. And he's waiting to meet you. And I think you just probably like, should get ready to meet him. Like, you know, probably don't drink quite so much. Seriously, you know, get ready because if you're wasted, I don't know if you'll recognize him. So, but I, I'm telling you it's gonna happen, I just know it. And she's all, you know what she has for the first time in her heart? Hope. Hope, it's hope that rescues us. The, the Bible says, get, be ready in season, out season, give an answer, not for the seven day literal creation that's inside of you, for the hope that's inside of you. That thing. And I'm just sharing hope with her. And trust me, I hope she meets this man too. One, because it'll transform her, and two, I won't look like an idiot, you know, those. And so she's like all excited, we finish the dinner, she goes home, and and, it, and then, you know, Donna keeps talking to her, and then we, and then we move. So who's, whose responsibility is it to go with her forward? Jesus. It's not yours. It's his. Do you know why? Because he loves her more than I do, and he loves her more than Donna does, and he's always been with her, always been with her. She didn't know it. She can't hear him because of the drugs and alcohol and because of the fear and the guilt and the shame and, and I, don't, I hate myself and people are against me and she can't hear that beautiful voice like, I love you, I think you're beautiful, I'm so proud of you. Can't hear that dumb voice. That, that voice doesn't make any sense. Where's the truth of that voice? No, you're beautiful, you're an amazing artist. You're inspiring. Who, went with, who, who left the house with her? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's who went with her. So we're overseas. I'm, I come back in the U.S. on a like zero budget to do this talk, and I'm back in the same state. And when I'm getting ready to speak, I get this message that the guy who trained me, who poured himself into me overseas, his father had died suddenly, and the guy was asking me to fly to Minnesota to come to his father's funeral. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want to go, but I just, I can't, I don't have the budget to, to buy a new ticket, go there, fly back to here and get back overseas. I just can't do it. So I'm saying, Lord, I would love to go up there and honor the guy that poured into me and, at, at his father's funeral, but I like, you're going to have to make a way for it because I'm on a tight schedule and a strict budget and I can't do it. But if you would open the way, I would do it. So I stand up, I'm doing this thing, speaking at this thing, finish... Finish. I, I walked down, and 
I see this red hair bouncing down through the people. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And she, it, it's her. It's our neighbor. And she comes up to me and she hugs me and she goes, I met the man. I met him. And I'm like, you did? Yeah. And I said, who is he? <laughs> you know. She goes, Jesus. I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. Woo. Good, yeah, that's what I meant. That's what I, she goes, you knew that, didn't you? Go, I do now, yes, I, yeah. And she goes, I met him. I know what you were saying now, that he's the one that's always loved me, yes. And he's the one that walked me through alcoholism and drug abuse, and he's walked me through all of my fear, guilt, and shame. And, and she goes, I'm, I'm so grateful for you and Donna and all, of the, all that you did and, and you shared this with me. And she goes, and she's just a different human being. Still a hurricane, but more, a tamer hurricane, but still gale force for sure. And, and, sh and she goes, I want to do something for you. I, I wrote this check. I just want to give it to you. And she gives me the amount of money it takes to get to Minnesota and back to go overseas like that. And she has been overseas with us teaching Muslims how to do art. Like, that's your neighbor. That's your neighbor. Do you know who's wowed by the one who came to love her? I am. Do you know why the Lord is sending you out there to be his witnesses? It's for them, but it's to wow you. It's to make you fall down and worship and not walk away going, I don't think this thing works. It does work. Say yes to it in the name of Jesus. Thank you.
You're good. 